Hello guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hartton Family Farms, and today, first day back on the farm since we got that thunderstorm in the last video card right here. Sorry, GoPro was already dead, so that's cool. So anyway, Nathan ended up finishing the uh, that uh, chiseled piece there, and we are done chiseling. We got done literally five minutes before the rain, and Curtis ended up getting about 30 to 40 acres of anhydrous on down there, so he did pretty good. We had a pretty good run. It was a good six days of work in the field. So honestly, we have uh, we have done zero spraying so far. Once we get two anhydrous bars going, we got probably five days of anhydrous left. And obviously we need to field cultivate, slash soil finish and plant. So we have quite a bit to do. It is Tuesday again. We finally got some sun and some heat back. So hopefully we'll be back in the fields again tomorrow if it doesn't rain which is supposed to rain, so we'll, we'll see. Anyway, I'm coming up here. We're gonna do some uh, work on the uh, fence lines around the long farm. It's pretty rough back there. So we're gonna, Nathan and I are gonna head up there. Unloading seed. Fill them. So I'm gonna take this, this truck up to the uh, dump trailer that my dad has. Nathan's gonna hook up to the flatbed. We're gonna load up the skid loaders, we're gonna head down and destroy some trees. Fueling, of course, because there can never be a full truck. We are loaded up and heading south. Nathan's got the TV 450B stump puller and the saw. I got the SV340 and the grapple. Let's roll out. Neighbors got some cover crop in there. What type of cover crop? No clue. He's got quite a bit of it. Hi, Jeff. This is our uh, Sturk field. Did really well two years ago. Last year, the corn did not so well. We think because of drainage issues. You can just look out there right now. That spot's wet, like real wet. That spot's wet. There's quite a bit of wet holes in here. It's a very low-lying field, and it is tiled, but I don't know how well. So we want to put beans in it this year, but we'll see, because there's a wet hole. I mean, everything's wet right now, don't get me wrong, we got an inch and a tenth. So this is our uh, Sturk field. Did really well two years ago. Last year, the corn did not so well. We think because of drainage issues. You can just look out there right now. That spot's wet, like real wet. That spot's wet. There's quite a bit of wet holes in here. It's a very low-lying field, and it is tiled, but I don't know how well. So we want to put beans in it this year, but we'll see, because there's a wet hole. I mean, everything's wet right now, don't get me wrong, we got an inch and a tenth out of the last rainstorm, but like, some of these are real wet. We're here. Let's go ahead and get the stuff unloaded. The cutter on this one, I didn't have any problem with it. Okay. So, since it's constantly running it. on this girl Sheesh. so I'm gonna run our tree puller that's this guy so I can start pulling these smaller trees let's get her going I'll explain a little bit later so it's pretty simple what I'm doing just grabbing trees by the roots and yanking them out of the ground need a big hoss for it because it takes a lot of force to break trees out of the ground Grapple's all done, at least for now. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, slap this baby on the uh, on the grapple. Sorry, the tree pole is all done. This thing is a freaking mini bulldozer. It's awesome. I'm just, uh, Nathan came through and just cut a bunch of trees down and I am just coming through and pushing it into the, into the siding. And this thing's a beast for it. Honestly, nothing will stop it. Not even like medium sized trees, like six inch diameter trees, it just pushes them over. It's sweet. Oh, what are you doing down there? Anyway, this thing just pushes. Good grief. I'm literally just started from up there and just started yeeting all this stuff together. 
Same over there, just started pushing and pushing and pushing. I am impressed. I've never ran a CTL before, so I guess I'm not saying this case one is the best, but I'm saying a compact track loader over a wheeled skid loader, no comparison went out in the woods. This thing is amazing. And I haven't been filming a whole lot because it's really hard to film and uh, run a skid steer effectively. So choosing to run the sits here to try to get some stuff done while I'm taking vacation. 35 hours on her. Not gonna lie to you guys, this is extremely satisfying. This fence line was littered with little small trees going up the hill was just disgusting. Trees everywhere. Now we just got a brush pile there and a brush pile there. And we went along this entire fence line, not fence line, but tree line here and probably pushed in, oh, I don't know, a lot of trees. So for two hours of the work, we definitely gained back probably, I don't know, it's hard to put an area on it, but maybe a quarter acre, but that's gonna pay us back because we're not gonna scratch our equipment. We're gonna have more yields because we got rid of some of the trees, the nuisance trees. No, we didn't get rid of the actual core trees. We're just basically taking out the trees that have overgrown and gone, trying to grow out into our field because trees, when they're in a big old forest, they try to go wherever, they grow or reach to wherever there's sunlight. So they're gonna wanna reach out into our field. So they're gonna rob our nutrients and they're gonna rob our sunlight. We don't want that. So we're not taking away any timber habitat because deer and other animals need that, but we're trying to also keep our farm ground. That's what we're trying to do. And this TV450B, mint. Now I'm gonna go and move the trailers off the roof. Good enough, let's roll. You guys remember, we thinned this fence line probably two, three years ago, car to that video right here. I uh, got poison ivy in that video. That was fun. That's also the big reason why we got this tool is because my family was very susceptible to poison ivy. We're done with that. Also, side note, anyone want a 4840? That's been sitting there for six months. At what point does it become a squatter's rule and you can just take it? So look at that. I literally, sorry for the glare, but I literally just went ahead and Cleared that entire fence line. That is awesome. This thing is a beast. I just can't understell this thing. Ah, crap. Snap the post. I mean, she was pretty rotten anyway. So it doesn't surprise me that it, I just nudged it and it snapped, but this would be an easy fix. You're just gonna come up with two T posts. That's a T post right there. And just fix that fence in. Here comes the zombie killer. What are you gonna do? Just the stuff along the fence line that's sticking in. Okay. Oh. Um, where to, I'll probably just stick that, shove it in there then. If you can go somewhere down a little further, find a spot, that'd be good. Okay, sounds good. Because there isn't really a good corner to stick it in. No, there's really not. Unless we wanna basically just put it in the pasture and burn it someday. Right here's where Pat got stuck, so I'm gonna take this grapple bucket and just try to smooth out these ruts, because they're kinda bad. Oh, this thing. I got my sprayer buried in that. Go to that video, check it out. Nightmares. Dang it, that saw's too quick. He's just demolishing that tree. The GoPro didn't turn on quick enough. Let's go. Whoa, it got dark all of a sudden. And this is the last branch. I'd say we did a little bit. Talk about a good day. No, well, good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon. Let's pull this thing on the road so we can load up. Now time to load this unit up. This thing was a beast today. Shoot, I think we put on five hours on this thing and it was hard fought five hours, that is for sure. Good. Let's head home. 
Oh, let's roll. Made it back. Go and load it. Putting this unit away. Well, that was fun. Sorry guys, today was just one of those days where I just didn't feel like filming. We had a lot to do. We didn't have a lot of time to do it, so I just put my head down and just went, you know. Any of my, any of my people that get on camera, you know the feeling, so. Apologize for that. We'll just go ahead and roll this video into the, uh, into the next day when I'm up here. Oh, the toolbar that was here the other day is gone. Local co-op had their uh, big 23 knife and hydrus bar. It was there two, three days ago, but they must have been able to run yesterday because it's not there. Anyway, well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hard Tongue Family Farms. It's later in the afternoon. I'm not gonna get up to the farm till about five o'clock or so, but we just had a big old storm going through and we, for the most part, got missed. We were just about dried out. We were supposed to get an inch of rain today and we got maybe a 10th and two tenths max. So we are thinking we might be able to run tomorrow afternoon, if not Friday. Saturday. So I'm gonna come up today. I am going to get the sprayer ready to go. I gotta replace that spray pipe and I believe I have to uh, do some other small stuff. I miss some greaser, it's all the all the etc. So anyway, let's get up to the farm. I believe I'm gonna continue this video on the uh, the skid loader videos that I did a couple days ago. That was three days ago now. So first off, got some new t-shirts. What do you guys think? They're the dry fit kind. Try out some for a potential merch order. You guys interested in some Heart Tongue Family Farms merch? Try to go with hats kind of similar to this. Maybe some new t-shirts. I don't know, what do you think? Field on your left, you're gonna be corn. It's already got anhydrous on it, it's been chiseled. This field right here is about half done with anhydrous. It is fully chiseled. And the split right here, the north part's gonna be corn and the south part's gonna be beans. Most of our beans, we let uh, the stubble sit there and we no-till into them. And I'm guessing the anhydrous tractor is still there, which it's not, surprising. I don't know where the anhydrous tractor's at. I'm assuming it's back up at the farm. The only thing I can think of. Well, uh, and Hydrus Bar's back. The tractor's unhooked. I'm guessing Curtis is going to put the 8050 on it. I do what you knew. But we got the Mini X back here. Going to bring that back to the landlord that we got. And they're working on my sprayer, putting the fatties on. Nice. Oh, hey guys, you might also be wondering what the heck I did with my with my wrist. Well, I uh, might have broke my thumb. Not 100% yet. It's for sure sprained. And a case tractor might have did it. I'll explain a little later. Not happy about it. Fatties are on. Nice. So we put flotation tires on our on our sprayer in the spring when we don't have any crops to run over because the key, nice thing about a sprayer, you can put skinny tires on that are about as the, the width of the, of the whatever that's called, mud flap. And you can get in between corn rows, just no problem. But when you do that, you have a really low, narrow footprint on your sprayer for a uh, heavy thing. So that creates compaction. So you wanna limit compaction as much as possible. Therefore you put a 650 metric tires on there, to space out your weight. So just looking over fluids, I do need to add some hydraulic oil. Kind of see right there. She's a little low, as in a lot of low. And then I also need to add some uh, transmission fluid because I'm also low on that. So let's figure that out. Curtis is bringing that out. Why, I don't know. And it is windier than the Dickens, so I do apologize. Cool, we got the uh, field view mounted in here. I need to get a charging cable at some point. Got our Midland radio. I'm gonna probably blow this thing or rinse this thing off because the tires are all dusty. And then uh, I think this thing's about ready to go. I think that's the part that I need. So Pat said he hit something last year and just didn't replace it yet, so that's the sparts. Let's try it out. I'm guessing Kurt's gonna hook up the 8050 to the toolbar. It's the only thing I can think of him doing. Go ahead and uh, lower this boom to the ground. So I want to work on that spray pipe right there. Uh, 
that'll be good enough. Now I can work on that spray pipe. We're just replacing that spray pipe right there. It's uh, Pat hit something with it back it up last year, I'm guessing, and it kinked it. As you saw in this video, I was leaking. So we're replacing that spray pipe, and then we're, uh, that sprayer should be just about ready to go. I got three, four more grease zerks to hit, and then I gotta put some hydraulic oil and some transmission oil in there. Then I think we're good to go. Junk. She's staying down. So we're bringing the 340 up to the, uh, up to Kunal's so it can get worked on. So I'm gonna go pick up Nathan. See how many times it takes for me to start this guy up. Two. Usually only three. And she fires right up. Let's go pick up Nathan. And there's Curtis working on that boom. And yes, I'll get to this here right in a second. Just cause it was the red, the red tractor that did it to me. Dead of the doorknob right now. She's uh, pretty wet out, so there's not a whole lot of uh, anhydrous getting put on. But don't worry, that'll change here probably by the weekend. A lot of new hay equipment. That's what we need right there. Yeah. <laughs> but bigger. Yeah. Especially if we get into this wheat. Yeah, $7 wheat. It's got to be more than that. That was closer to 10 at one point. I'm right, putting that boom back together. It's freaking windy and cold out there, so I'm not recording outside. But uh, I need to get some zip ties out of the 340 back here, if I can get back there. No zip ties I could find, oh well. We did get our Cornelius seed in. That is a seed uh, grower that's kind of near us. So these are various varieties that we have. We typically don't order the same variety. We just mix it up depending on the location and where it's going. We have usually around that 105 to 113 day maturity. Like that's a 113, that's a 113, that's a 105. Maturity is just kind of how long, uh, roughly how many days it takes for the crop to go in to be take it out, how long it takes to grow. And that varies widely because you can put in 120 day corn down south, but up north, up in like the Dakotas, you only want to put like a 90 day in, if not less. Let's keep working on the sprayer. The sucker is ready to go. We're just greasing the uh, lift cylinders on the back. Do that, you gotta lower it down. I forgot to do that the other day. Then we are ready to go. On top of, we still gotta zip tie that, the harnesses and stuff there, but we'll get there eventually. Then we'll be ready to start spraying next week. That's the goal. Got rolling, got the fatties on. We're good to go. Like I said, we just gotta zip tie up those harnesses right there. Then we'll be ready. Put the sucker away. Not gonna call it quits for the night. So I got a couple things I wanna end up for you guys. I want to bring up to you guys one i got this sweet little 80 dollar wrench set brand new from deer and for 80 bucks it's got quite a bit so it's got a three inch drive ratchet a quarter inch drive screwdriver a crescent wrench a, an extension a bunch of torques a bunch of uh I put that on backwards I forget what that is one sec a bunch of torques a bunch of phillips and hex to heads and whatnot got a bunch of quarter inch drive sockets four to 13 mil for uh, millimeters and 3 16 up to half inch. Got an adapter, and we got all sorts of deep well and uh, standard well. So we got nine to 18 mil standard, three eighths to seven eighths standard metric. It's 80 bucks and a kind of nippy little carrying case. Not bad. I'm actually really looking forward to that. That'll be handy for me to keep with, to keep with me so I can do any small jobs that's needed. Then second thing we are, uh, Kind of in limbo right now. We had some uh, rain come through today. Yeah, I didn't get much, couple tents, but it's gonna knock us out for today, for sure. Tomorrow, probably, and potentially Saturday. But I'm hoping by Saturday afternoon we can get rolling. You guys are gonna laugh at me when you figure out how I broke my thumb. It's either, it's for sure sprained, it mm, could be broken, I'm not sure yet, but it happened two weeks ago. But I was uh, moving equipment around. I had a thumb injury in the past. Basically a football injury back in the day, which has been a while ago, 10 plus years ago. But I went to go ahead and go like this to open up a door and I felt something snap and I was like, ouch. And I just moved on with my day, thinking that it would get, it was just nothing that would get better. Two weeks later, it's actually gotten worse. And I was like, you know what? I really don't want to see a doctor. So I'm just going to grab a brace. That's what I did. But it was this door exactly. This Magnum door is a little bit hard to open. It's, you know, really press it in. I'm starting to hurt and I went like that didn't open 
and that's what I heard the pop or snap or whatever it was. So yeah, this case door broke my thumb. Dang case IH tractors. They're always coming out to get you. Either that or it was karma because I work at deer, but I run red equipment. It's probably karma. So hopefully my finger's okay by the time you guys see this video. I mean, I'm about a week and a half to two weeks behind just because with the amount of farming work that's been done these last couple weeks. I was up here all every day last week, so I didn't really get a lot of time to edit. And I got a lot of footage. So there's going to be a lot more frequency of videos every other day is what I'm shooting for, as well as uh, longer videos because I don't have time to split them up. You guys enjoy the longer videos, or at least you don't mind it. Hopefully the wind's not near as bad. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and uh, unload that bale mover. Unhook this guy. Oh. Easy as that to uh, unhook from the bucket. There's Amber's piggies. She's got pigs for fair. Kind of a little embarrassing how long it took me to hook that up, so I'm not gonna film it. There's my hay rack. I do is I pick one up off the bale mover, set it behind me, and then I grab the next one, scoop that one up, and then uh, we're good to go. We did have a tile line that we crushed right here, so it was leaking. So they had to dig that out, repair it, and put more pea gravel around. That's what the tile looked like, crushed. No bueno. That thing is unloaded. So now I'll take these two back, stick that bell mover in the cubby right here where we like to keep it, and call it good. Till next time, buddy. Now we'll switch buckets again, because we got to use this loader every day to load up the uh, chopper truck, take feed down south. So that we do. All done. Good enough, bud. Let's go ahead and talk to grandma and call it a night. So the 340's dropped off. It's gonna get taken a look at tomorrow just to kind of see if the Kunas can figure out anything on the uh, transmission heat issues. And I spy something in this yard that looks like ours. I'll let you be the judge. It's in frame. It's in frame right now. I'll let you be the judge which is which. Plenty of options and it's not that nice semi. Time for some uh, supper with grandma. I call it dinner, but supper. Hi, Cabby. Hi, Cabby. Hi, kitties. Hi, Cabby. What are you doing? What are you doing, Cabby? Oh, yep. You want milk. I know. I'm not going to give you milk. You just want to suck. Oh, Cabby. Uh, Hi, Grandma. Hello. Ooh, it's getting cold. It dropped probably 25 degrees ever since that cold front went through and dropped that rain. So anyway guys, I'm gonna head home, call our video, so thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you guys this weekend. Be sure to take it easy, stay safe, and as always, cow chow for now.